the OMAC ensures security Corps can rely on. A future we can control. The OMAC. I think it works pretty well, don't you? Blue Beetle is a new superhero movie that concludes the current iteration of the DCEU, or begins the next one, or I don't know, whatever. In it, there's this average guy, Jaime, who gets a burger box that sadly contains no burger, no! but instead an alien scarab. A scarab that jumps up his ass and turns him into a superhero. And then an evil weapons company CEO shows up to steal the scarab for her weapons technology, and then Jaime fights a minuscule transformer for some reason, and that's about it. Blue Beetle. And for me at least, Blue Beetle was quite the emotional roller coaster. Not the movie itself, but rather the experience of trying to see it. I wanted to see it in theaters, but I couldn't because there genuinely were no showings for it. To the point where I thought that Disney was trying to bury the film because it's just too good. Because I mean, these results are not naturally possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Well, I finally saw it now, and turns out it's all natural, baby. There were no showings for Blue Beetle simply because people just didn't want to show up to see it. Which is kind of sad to say, because I do think there are cool things here. The suit is pretty cool. Forcing the hero to deal with an alien consciousness that only he can hear and understand is a great idea. Wait, you don't hear that? There's a voice in my head. The setting and cinematography are very cool. This is basically Miami, and not only does it remind me of how Michael Bay shoots Miami, it also stands out from the usual grey DC aesthetic. The culture is extremely cool. We don't usually get Mexican heroes or hero families, and that was great. Plus, even though the actors here are unknowns, they did a really great job, nonetheless. But, aside from those inherent positives that the filmmakers here were lucky to have, the filmmakers themselves didn't really bring much to the table. In fact, as far as the narrative side is concerned, it's as if this was their first time writing or making a film. It's not the worst DC movie, because it didn't really have any prior value that it could devalue, is that guy? but it is arguably one of the most incompetent DC movies. The inherent problems here are bigger than they've possibly ever been. Blue Beetle is so fundamentally incompetent that it's no wonder that audiences didn't give a sh So today, let's see what these fundamental issues are. If you mess these things up, especially when trying to introduce a new superhero, nobody will care enough to show up and you will die and wither away alone. The first fundamental issue causing audience disinterest here is lacking first impressions that fail to sell what's on sale. As a quick initial example, look at the opening. The evil CEO flies into a snowy desert where her men are digging up the MacGuffin, and what unfolds is this. She talks to her henchman who says they'll get to the MacGuffin by morning. That's it. It doesn't exactly convince you of any value, not on the villain side or the MacGuffin side or any side. This is the part of the movie where it's easiest to sell the audience on the journey ahead, yet this movie doesn't even try, to the point where my mind, for instance, was already trailing off. It's in there. I can feel it. That's what she said! <laughs> To give you a better sense of what I mean, look at the introduction of the hero, Jaime, which is basically this. He arrives at the airport of his home city to reunite with his family. That's it. He talks with his family, he goes to eat with his family, he goes home and looks at the city skyline, and then he goes to a cleaning job that his sister got him. That's it. That's how this movie sells its new DC superhero character to you, as a guy who is in no way interesting or deserving of your attention. Hello. That's how the movie sells itself, with absolutely nothing of value. What the f is this piece of shit? And before we get into whether any value is sold later on, what you must understand as a filmmaker is that 
as in real life, first impressions in film are everything. If the first impressions are lacking, it's really tough to come back from that, which is why you have to make the most of what you have right away. In Puss in Boots, Puss in Boots is introduced with him throwing a fiesta in his enemy's casa, after which he defeats a Shadow of the Glasses Colossus a thousand times his size. <laughs> His boldness and fighting talent is right away very apparent. I've made my mark, I'm done. And then the wolf is introduced with him showing up to wipe the floor with Puss in Boots with barely any effort. Oh, the first impressions are very strategically used to build up the value of who these characters are and the reason to be invested in them. I mean, even the more criticized DC movies are able to do this. Bruce Wayne is introduced with him running into collapsing buildings, Batman is introduced with him terrifying civilians and robbers and even police. Even though we all already know that this character is awesome, this movie still immediately sells us on why he's awesome. Whereas in Blue Beetle, not only are characters sold as just whatever characters who may as well be anyone, but the first impressions also work against the inherent value of what's on sale. The Mexican culture, for example, down the line turns out to be the biggest reason to watch this film, yet the beginning focuses mostly on its stereotypical negatives. Oh, the heroes are Mexican, so they're immediately worried about being arrested. Is that kind of talk right there that's gonna get us all busted? Oh, they're Mexican, so they struggle to get a proper job because of discrimination. Oh, it's on me. Oh, you can stand back. Okay. Like, why don't you have a seat, Jamie? Oh, they're Mexican, so they're losing their business and neighborhood to capitalism, and they work as lowly house cleaners for the whites who are disrespectful and obscene to the point of being comical. And look, I'm not trying to dispute these struggles or say that they shouldn't be included. I'm just saying that if you want audiences to get into a movie about Mexican culture, then maybe your first action should be to sell them on why they should get into Mexican culture. Give them reason to be interested and invested in it. Because stuff like this doesn't quite do the job. Santos, hello. Hey, actually, that's not my name. If your initial showcases of Mexican characters is about them not respecting basic rules, they're being paid to follow. I deserve a luxury dump right now. I'm not exactly hooked to want to see more. If your initial showcase of the hero is an action showcasing his virginity. Hey, you, get your damn hands off. You know. I don't know you and I don't care to know you. All of which is a bummer because, again, the Mexican culture turns out to be the best part of this movie. To be Mexican means to stick together in every situation, to do things together no matter what those things are, to play for the same team all your life. Which I find very interesting because it's just so different from what I've been taught. So next time, maybe begin more with that. Like for example with the villains clearing out a squad of armed locals at the dig site to establish their deadliness and cybernetic powers. Whatever you have to sell, sell it in the first impressions to real audiences in, rather than to do nothing. The second fundamental issue causing audience disinterest here is the lack of proper scenes, meaning that not much really happens. Like I already touched on, nothing is actually achieved for a long time. The CEO goes to the snowy desert and talks about the MacGuffin. Jaime arrives at the airport and goes to chat with his family over food and then goes home to chat some more and then to work to chat even more. These aren't scenes so much as they're moments of verbal and visual information just carrying the story along. Nothing proper is being done in them to alter or progress the story. It's in there. I mean, even when things appear to be going on, not really. Once the niece of the evil CEO has stolen the CEO's precious burger and given it to Jaime to get it away, he takes it home and opens it to realize that it's not actually a burger. It's the MacGuffin Scarab. And then, for no clear reason, the Scarab quote-unquote chooses Jaime by going up his ass, after which this happens. On screen, stuff is indeed happening here. We're flying all across the city, we're running into all kinds of dangers, and it looks pretty cool, right? But again, it's not really a proper scene per se, because nothing is being accomplished in it. It's not like in Iron Man's first flight, which was about Tony pushing his suit to the max to find its limit. The record for fixed wing flight is 85,000 feet, sir. And then getting in trouble because of it. 
No, Jaime isn't even in control of the suit. He's just kind of there while the suit just kind of flies around with the explanation that it has to quote unquote do system checks or something. Mostly, this happens because the filmmaker said so. You know, this is that point in the movie where the hero tests his new abilities. And as I have said before, a scene is made up of two things, intention and obstacle. A character must do something verbally or physically while something stands in the way. And it's the character's success or failure of doing it that changes the movie and pushes it to the next step. That's a proper scene per se, most of which the content of Blue Beetle is not. And although there are also proper scenes here, the issue there is that not much is being done with them. With the scarab heist, for example, this is how it goes. Denise walks into the laboratories, bumps into someone to get a keycard, takes the scarab and leaves. And then when the alarm blares, she gives it to Jaime, who happens to be there and who literally just then walks out the door with it. That's all. Lock up the south entrances. You two with me. What the f***? It's as if even the movie itself is so disinterested in its own events that it just wants to get through them as fast as possible. When Jaime protects Denise from the CEO, all he does is step up and say stop, and then he's fired. That's all. He doesn't have to do something, he doesn't even try to fight for his and his sister's job or anything. It's just... Stop it. You're fired. Hey, come meet me tomorrow and I'll give you another job. And see. When Jaime goes to save the needs from the CEO after his rear end has been violated by the scarab, he needs to... Oh, never mind, she's right there. No way. She just hops in and they drive away. And see. When Jaime and the niece go to break inside the evil company to get something that can help them, they need to... Oh, never mind. The uncle has a device that allows them to waltz in, and then the niece picks a lock, and there you go. And see. But then the henchman comes to fight them, but oh, the suit will do Jaime's fighting for him. Oh my gosh, how'd you do that? I have no idea. Well, at least the uncle has to do something at the very end. At least, there's something. What I'm getting at is that you need meaningful conflict to have a scene, and that a scene is meaningful only when the conflict is done something with. Denise arguing with the CEO about her weapons technology, for example, is pointless. One of them is saying bad, the other is saying good, and then that's the end of that. Nothing was done or achieved or changed, it's mainly just information. The finale is more than information. The scene of Jaime deciding to jump off roof to hopefully activate his suit to go save his family on paper is a scene. But stuff like this, even if these are scenes in a technical sense of the word, they're not the kind I feel a need to drive to the theater for. The third fundamental issue causing audience disinterest here is that most of the substance is he said, she said, bullshit. For example, if you look at the reasons behind the main conflict, you won't find much there. Apparently, the evil CEO wants the powers of the Scarab to create an army of super soldiers, which we learn from a video game ad on TV. But we never delve any further into it. Why is the success of the super soldier program so important to the villain? To what purpose are the super soldiers being sold? What's gonna happen if we don't stop the program? I don't know, it's all just talk. The OMAC is the future of this company, you should be so excited! Just like at the end, where the movie says that Jaime will die if his powers are taken. The good news is, I figured out how to get it out. The bad news is that you have to be dead. And then his powers are taken, and he's fine. You know, it's all fairy dust off the mouth. There's no real reason to even fight at the end because everybody has what they want. But we fight anyway because that's what happens in movies. You do not deserve this power! And you can find this verbal fairy dust problem all over. Jaime studied hard in college to become a lawyer, but we don't see any of it and it never comes in play in any way. Jaime complains about not getting a proper job, but we never see him even try to get a job. Jaime's family lost their order shop, which we never knew existed, and will 
will soon lose their house, but we wouldn't even realize unless they said it. Jaime wants to get his family into another place to live, but for no clear reason why. This looks like a pretty good place to live to me. The Scarab chooses to go up Jaime's ass above all other asses, but without any indication of what Jaime has done to deserve the honor. So I'm guessing it's chosen you. Why? What do you mean why? Why? Just trust me on this. See the movie for yourself for more examples, but what I'm getting at is that your material has substance only when you do something with it on screen. If you want us to emotionally partake in Jaime's family's efforts to keep their house, then show them confront evictors, show another family down the street being evicted while their house gets bulldozed. If you want us to root for Jaime in his efforts to get his family out of this neighborhood, then establish that there's gangs and crime or something there, because I can't really root for him unless I have enough to understand what I'm rooting for. My point is that if you throw in material simply for the sake of it, it'll become air, it'll take up space and runtime, but with seemingly nothing to show for it. Oh, the niece opens up about her dead family and then immediately is horny enough to have a first kiss with someone she just met. Yeah, I'm not really buying this love relationship. Oh, Nothing happened. Her mom died. Oh, turns out that there's an original Blue Beetle superhero who nobody has even acknowledged until the midpoint. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Ted Cord was Blue Beetle? The hell was Blue Beetle? Oh, Jaime is constantly telling the Scarab suit to not kill their enemies, and then at the end, the Scarab has learned from him to do the same for him when he's at his weakest. What are you doing? Estoy contento, quiero continuar así. Seguir. It should be powerful, but isn't, because not enough is done with it. Why is it so important for Jaime to not use guns or kill in the context of this film? I don't know, because it's not properly explored, and thus I don't really care. It just takes up space. Overall, think of it like loading a musket. You pour down the powder, you load the projectile, but if you don't then stuff the projectile down all the way, it's basically useless. Not only will your projectile most likely miss the target, but you've also just wasted a whole musket that could have been loaded with something else. Oh, and your soldier is now also dead. If you can't do anything with Jaime's family losing their house, then don't add it in. Don't ever just add things in. If the hero's motivation is to get rid of his superpowers, you gotta do enough to make the audience invest in that motivation. Like, oh, the Scarab is starting to take over his brain and body forever because he doesn't know how to be one with it. Okay, yes, I do support and want him to get rid of it. But to just have the hero say that, uh oh, I gotta get rid of these powers because the bad guys are coming for me, which they would now do anyway, no. Dude, you got superpowers, they're your best chance at survival, hell no, don't get rid of them now. As in, I just don't have enough to partake in what the movie is doing. And I guess that's what Blue Beetle is most of all. It's a pretty great new musket loaded with top of the line ammunition, which was never properly pushed down. As a result, the musket was unable to bang, and without a bang, the audience just didn't care enough to come check it out. La ciudad se llama Duke, Nuevo México el estado. Anda caliente el cartel, al respeto le faltaron.